Now, you know, you know, Susan, in spite of all of our wonderful work and the things that people have known, right now, loneliness, anxiety, stress off the charts. Give people just a couple of ideas about the importance of dealing with stress and the tolls of not dealing with it. So I think it's so profoundly important. You know, even prior to this pandemic, the World Health Organization in 2019 uh, declared that depression was the single leading cause of disability globally, outstripping cancer, outstripping heart disease. And there is no organization, there is no demographic that is protected from this. And so in many ways, you know, COVID has shone a spotlight on issues like stress and loneliness and burnout. Um, but in truth, these ideas and this crisis has long been a part of what we are seeing growing across the world and also in our organizations. And I think that, um, Marshall, in order for me to really give a response about stress that feels whole and that feels human, according to what we're describing, uh, one thing that I just want to say first is that we know that the kinds of skills that I'm going to talk about, these emotional agility skills, are crucial to well-being. We know that they are essential to effective leadership and the ability to love and lead and work and be effective human beings. That said, uh, we cannot promote ideas of resilience that basically perpetuate the idea that people need to keep on adapting to untenable circumstances. In other words, what I am describing here when I talk about some of these strategies needs to be recognized in the context of they are essential and foundational to our well-being, and yet so are effective policies, systems, and processes in our organizations. We cannot simply ask people to keep adapting to untenable circumstances. So that said, let me give you some ideas that we know from emotional agility from my work that are really powerful. Um, for people who might be saying, well, what is emotional agility? I'll say that emotional agility at its core, I can go into more evidence and I can become really nerdy about this, but at its core, emotional agility is about being healthy human beings the skills that allow us to be healthy with ourselves and others. And uh, you can hear from my accent that I am originally South African. I grew up as a white child in the suburbs of apartheid South Africa. And this was a country and a community committed to not seeing, you know, to denial, because it is denial that makes 50 years of racist legislation possible while people convince themselves that they are doing nothing wrong. And from a very early age, I became interested and profoundly kind of touched through a range of circumstances by the idea of seeing versus not seeing, denial versus not. And so emotional agility at its core is about this ability to uh, see ourselves effectively. In South Africa, there's this beautiful phrase that you hear every day on the streets, which is the Zulu word for hello. And it's sawabona. And there's this beautiful, powerful intention behind the word because sawabona literally translated means I see you. And by seeing you, I bring you into being. And so let me give you some practical, just very quick strategies that might be helpful to people who, like so many of us, are feeling exhausted and stressed and burnt out. The first is that I facetiously sometimes say that we are in a tyranny of positivity. And just to be clear, I'm not anti-positivity. I'm a pretty happy person. Um, but when leaders, when organizations 
endorse this idea that people need to be falsely positive. You know, people are concerned about a change, concerned about a strategy burnt out, and a leader telegraphs, oh, we've just got to get on with it, or you're either on the bus or you're off the bus. What that leader is doing is basically saying, you've got to be positive. If you if you negative or if you bring your human emotions to the workplace, um, we're going to sideline you or we're going to see you as being someone who isn't on the bus. And so the first thing that I want to say is that there is a tyranny in our organizations and in our society of toxic positivity. The idea that even in a pandemic, we've got to perfect our screenplay or bake sourdough bread, and that if you didn't do those things, that you lack discipline. So the first thing that I will say to everyone listening is that this moment has invited so much of all of us. And if you are feeling exhausted or lonely or stressed or down, these feelings are normal. We are in the shadow of illness and death. So acceptance, the acknowledgement of what is, the turning towards the self rather than denial is a prerequisite to healthy humans and to effective leadership. Another quick strategy, I've got so many, but I don't want to take up too much time, is that one of the things that we know is that very often when people are feeling stressed, what do they say? They say, I'm stressed. You know, I feel stressed. How was your day? My day was stressful. What's going on today? It's stressful. I would invite you for a moment to recognize that there is a world of difference between stress and disappointment, stress and exhaustion, stress and that gnawing, knowing feeling of I'm in the wrong job or the wrong career. When we label everything as stress, our body psychologically doesn't actually know what to do with it. So a really powerful strategy when you're feeling stressed is to recognize that your emotions are actually data. Your emotions are signaling things that are important to you. And you can't really read the data unless you actually go beyond this word, which is stress. And you say to yourself, what is actually happening for me? So we know that when people are more able to say, I'm disappointed, I feel unsupported, I feel bored, what that granular labeling is doing, it's called emotion granularity. What that granularity is doing is two things. Number one, it's helping you to understand in actuality what is going on for you. And this activates what's called our readiness potential as human beings. The part of us that allows us to take active steps towards the thing that needs to be addressed. The second thing that happens is we recognize that these emotions as data help us to understand what's important to us. When you say, I'm bored, that boredom is actually signaling that growth and learning are important to you. When you are concerned, that concern might be signaling that quality and and connection are important to you. So our emotions are data. They're not directives, but they're data. And we need to go beyond just saying, oh, I'm stressed and really trying to understand how we can be whole and seen human beings in the context of that stress.